Welcome back for our session on how to determine thin film thickness. In this session, we're going to cover four key points. First, I'd like to introduce you to interference features that will show up in your data if you have a transparent film. I want to show you the mouse roller wheel function and a couple advanced features in CompleteEase to determine the film thickness. Now, data from a, a thin film will exhibit interference features if light is able to travel through the film. That light that travels through the film will rejoin the light reflecting from the surface. And the interference between those light rays will cause peaks and valleys in your data. And that's how you know you have a film that's transparent that allows the light to travel through. But it's also telling you that now you can use that data to determine the film thickness. Consider this data as an example. The oscillations in the data show me peaks and valleys, and that suggests that the light is getting through my film. So what I'd like to do is use that information to tell how thick is the film. Let's jump over to that data in complete ease. This was a measurement on another thermal oxide on silicon, so I'm going to open the same model we used in the previous section, which is the silicon with thermal oxide model. Now again, it has 1,000 angstroms as my starting thickness, but when I generate, I notice that that thickness is wrong. And I know that because in order for the thickness to be correct, it has to reproduce the shape of my data, which means it has to have the same numbers of peaks and valleys as my experimental data. Now in general, as the film gets thicker, you're going to get more peaks and valleys in your data. And that's one way to tell how thick the film is. Let me jump back to the model here. And let's change the thickness. Instead of a 1,000 angstroms, let's change it to 2,000 angstroms and generate again. Notice that when I did that, I shifted the positions of my peaks, and I also increased the number of peaks and valleys in my model calculation. But still not enough to match my experimental data. Again, I need to go thicker to get more peaks and valleys. And that's where we're going to get to the mouse roller wheel. So you take your mouse with the roller wheel in the center, and position it directly over top of the thickness. By holding the shift key down, now I can roll my mouse and it will increase the thickness of that fit parameter. Now notice what's happening. As I increase the thickness of the, the, uh, the oxide here, it's also updating the graph to show me the number of peaks and valleys in my data. And if I keep rolling to the right thickness, somewhere near about 5,000, I have the same number of peaks and the same number of valleys as my experimental measurement. Okay? That tells me that I'm pretty close to the correct answer. If I press fit, it should find that result. Okay? Now it's important that you find the correct thickness before pressing fit. And I demonstrate that on my next slide, which shows the mean squared error versus, for this particular sample versus a wide range of thicknesses. If I'm close to the correct result, which is a really close to 500 angstroms, or 500 nanometers in this case, the MSE can find the correct minimum. But if I start the thickness at the wrong point, it's just as likely to find one of these other minima, which we call local minima. They're not the correct result. And I can demonstrate that in the software. Let me turn off the thickness prefit, which I'm going to show you, and type in the wrong thickness. And now if I press fit, it can't find the correct result. I have to be close to the final result in order for it to fall down in this valley. Okay? Which leads me to that thickness prefit. The thickness prefit in this case was working its own magic. To find the thickness prefit, go into your fit options. And notice that I've expanded them here. And the fit prefit was already turned on for me. Notice that now when I press fit, it immediately jumps to the correct solution. And that's because the thickness prefit is doing something very similar to the way our brain works. I saw that there were lots of oscillations. That meant the film had to be thicker. And that's exactly what the thickness prefit was doing. It was looking at, aha, more oscillations must be a thicker film. And it was jumping to that thicker guess. It's doing that by calculating zero crossings. But basically, it's just trying to reproduce how our brain processes the oscillations in the data. Now there's another way that we could have found that answer. Let me go back to the wrong answer, 1,000. 
turn off the thickness prefit so that you can see that it no longer works from the, from the incorrect result. And let's expand the global fit. So you'll notice it's right below the thickness prefit. And when I turn that on and expand it, it allows me to type in the thickness as one of my global search parameters. Now when I do that, I have to give it a minimum thickness, maybe zero, a maximum thickness, maybe 20,000 angstroms, and a number of guesses. The number of guesses is how it's going to equally divide up this range of thicknesses, and then it's going to search what is the MSE at each one of those values. Let me type in 50 global guesses and press fit. You'll notice just like the thickness prefit, it got us out of the local minimum and found the correct answer. Now in this particular case, the global fit works by searching the MSE at all 50 of those values, as I've shown on this graph here. Now, as a general rule of thumb, I like to use at least 20 guesses for my thickness for every one micron that I'm searching over. Okay? So in comparison, you can use either the film thickness prefit or the global fit to determine your thickness. So in conclusion, we've talked about interference features, which you're going to see, basically peaks and valleys in your data anytime the film is transparent. We've talked about the mouse roller wheel function, the thickness prefit, and the global fit. So I hope you'll join me next time as we cover more transparent films, and we're going to determine both the thickness of the film and its refractive index.